So it's time for the results. Hero licensing exam has ended. I mean, I feel like they're pretty it's much all gonna pass. The they all kind of crushed it. The biggest question mark for me is uh, Todoroki, I guess. Where if Meta didn't make it, I'm quitting the show. My name. There you go. Congratulations to Deku. I passed. I did it. Of course he did. Right? Oh, that's cute that his first thought was to think of All Might. I like that. So this is a pretty big deal. I mean, this means that Deku now can operate as a hero without supervision? Or is this like a driver's license where, you know, you gotta have a parent in your car with you yanking the steering wheel at the worst possible moments and almost hitting children? Which means he can start his journey towards living up to All Might's symbol of peace aspirations a little bit faster. And even though I don't think it's going to be exactly the way it's been framed, where Deku just replaces All Might or becomes the same kind of symbol of peace, at the very least, he can start on the journey a lot earlier, which is kind of essential right now with this huge power vacuum, you know, whether or not we're going to continue this cycle of having this one ultimate hero that everyone looks up to and sort of relies on, or a kind of group thing with all of his comrades and friends sort of, you know, picking up the slack and being this kind of cohesive unit of heroes, they're going to figure it out a lot faster. This opens up a lot of doors, I feel, and not just for Deku, for a lot of them, right? I'm guessing there's going to be like only one or two out of the class, if any, that fail. I feel like this is going to be a, you know, 10 points for Gryffindor situation with Todoroki. Because they did have that thing where they adapted on the fly, right? So even Gang Orca was impressed. And Gang Orca is a hard whale to impress. Up there! Call me a you hero! did it! I did it. There I am. All right. I'm on the this, is, this is amazing. Oh, How this must feel to finally pass this exam. I did it! What do you say? Yeah! I passed! I passed! Killed it! Congratulations to Invisible Girl as well. You're she! No! Not there. Oh, 10 points for Slytherin? Oof, not even a word. I talk about your quirk. This is massive, but did you learn the lesson from it or not? Learn your lesson. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my fault. Well, I learned it all the way the to the ground. Exam. My focus was too narrow minded. Forgive me. At least they got something valuable out of it. I don't know. And to You're put fine. it in but perspective, it's just their first year, right? Start. But still. And thanks to the things you said to me, I have a lot to think about. Holy crap! <laughs> right? But in a way, what that tells me is that they've already solved the problems that they're dealing with right now. Failing the exam, I think, puts it in perspective. And the most important thing to them is not their bitterness. It's what they want. And what they want is to be heroes. And they've just failed that because they didn't act heroically. And the fact that they're immediately able to acknowledge that and apologize to each other despite having just been at each other's throats basically and easily having the capacity to blame each other for the failure means that it's probably a lesson learned. And although the the negatives of this are pretty dramatic, I'd say, and kind of obvious. For example, not being able to participate when the villains attack is, is a huge loss for everyone if Todoroki can't be involved. There are some positives, right? Like one is a new alliance. You know, I feel like this kind of thing goes really deep. If you have a, a competitor or a rival or someone you have really deeply entrenched bitterness towards, weirdly, I feel like those people often become the strongest of allies because the fact that they're such bitter enemies means they're formidable, which means there's something that is respectable. And those traits are either going to be something that we ourselves see we lack or something that's very similar to us so that the other person is a risk of filling the space that we occupy. You know what I'm saying? A story I often like to tell is when I was 18, I had a squabble with it with this guy over, over a girl and we ended up like challenging each other to a, a fight and we met and had like an organized fist fight. I'm not going to go into how badly I got my ass kicked, but what I will say is we became really good friends and we're still friends to this day and that girl, like who knows where she is. And it's his first year and it's Inasa's first year and they're absolute killers and they're going to crush it eventually. And this is all assuming there's no like 10 points for Gryffindor and Slytherin thing, which I feel like there will be. Should have been more careful what you said. Words are important, you know. <laughs> Shut your mouth before I murder you. Those entitled people at the top think so highly of them, <laughs> don't they? This is his moment. Looks like our class hierarchy is collapsed. Really twisting the knife, Mineta. Not the time, though. We're Todoroki. I feel like he's going to be more okay with it than the other people are going to be okay with it for him, if you know what I mean. These demerits are itemized on your result forms, as you'll see, so I'd look at them. 61 points? These I are pretty fast eight. results. Oh, I got 84. Look at that, nice. guys. It turns out I'm actually kind of great at this stuff. <laughs> Wait, Yamamo, you got 94 points? I mean, she's, she's ace, as always. I got 71 points. It looks hmm. like they mostly docked me for some of the stupid things I said at the beginning. <laughs> this is bad. I'm yeah. thankful we've been given such empirical evidence about what we should improve upon. <laughs> Since this was a demerit system that didn't give anyone the chance to add points, there right. was no hope of passing after someone fell below 50. Right. So why let those people continue to fight until the end? 
learning experience, perhaps. I mean, if they're giving this detailed breakdown of their activities, there's a certain consideration, a respectable amount of consideration going into actually making them better as heroes, which is something I feel like a lot of tests lack. You know, tests are often just to measure your ability and to give a grade, right? It's rarely for the student, except maybe as motivation to work hard before the exam. So letting Todoroki and Anasa fall through to the end just means more feedback. Unless there's a twist. I mean, this is the exam of 8,000 twists. So I also feel like the score really doesn't end up mattering all that much. It seems like a pretty solid exam in many ways. I mean, it was very, very, very intricate, but it's almost impossible to match the real world with a simulation. And so there are just going to be people who don't test well. And there are also going to be people who test extremely well who end up being terrible in the real world. It's just sort of the way it works. A lot of times the magic happens in the intangibles, you know, the, the right combination of ingredients. Anyway, moving forward, those of you who pass can exercise the same authority as pro heroes, but only during emergency situations. This in is a really words, big deal. This villains, is huge. Saving the victims of criminal acts or accidents, you may act using your best judgment. Everyone looks so normal suddenly. Where's Chicken Man? Expect the balance we currently have in our world to be destroyed and for things to change quickly. You young well, this speech suddenly the turned awesome. For our future. There you it's go. There you go. You become exemplary heroes. That your reputations grow to suppress crime. Ooh, this is kind of a jagged edge for these two listening to this, having just failed. And as for those who fell short and did not pass, we don't have time for you to feel bitter about your loss. Instead, we offer you a chance to redeem yourselves after you attend a three month long special course and pass an individual test. Well, that's that's nice. That's great. We're going to need as many good heroes on the streets as we can get. This is totally different from the feeling I got at the beginning of this whole thing. That's why we watched you all until the end. Right, right. It's about feedback. You're welcome to retake the exam in April if you prefer to wait. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I gotta say, I didn't really like this guy at first. I didn't like this whole exam. But man, that just made it so much better. It was weird the way I came across it first. Maybe it was a translation. or Maybe it was just, I don't know, weird writing. But at first it felt to me like they were just trying to have a, a token gesture about having fewer heroes to make the public happy in response to villain pressure and in response to increasing criticism about heroes. And while I guess that it's not impossible, it's not mutually exclusive, at least this is aimed at making people as good as they can they can be and really really getting to who they are and what they can do and really understanding the you know the, the vacuum that needs to be filled so i feel a lot better about this guy although you can't gain points you can only lose them so he fails but luckily there's a summer course he can take that will allow me to like him again isn't this great Todoroki? you don't have to just take it easy relax the hierarchy is collapsing <laughs> oh no but it is enjoying this i'll work hard so, I mean, he's gonna that, crush it. It's like licensing exam summer camp. Was finally I mean, complete. It's total rookie, man. And my classmates and I were all one step closer to becoming pro heroes. One huge step closer. Yeah, this is amazing. Can you imagine this? I wouldn't blame him. Let it all out, man. Let it all out. have helped me get to this point, and some of them went through a lot of trouble to do so. Thinking about others, of course. It's like this is proof I've matured and gotten stronger. It's obvious to everyone watching, and everyone in the show, and everyone who's ever breathed, that Deku is all those things already. But I understand having something tangible, having something physical even, for symbolic purposes. There's something to that. There's something about ceremony, or awards, or physical objects, or rituals, or, or whatever it is that give things more reality than just the knowledge of those things. This is sort of a rough idea, but I feel like it has something to do with the fact that we just have so many thoughts, and our brains sort of need to have filters as to what it treats as real. But I feel like taking thoughts or taking ideas or, or knowledge or accomplishments or whatever and putting actions behind them, putting some kind of ritual behind them, tells our brains that something happened. And because it's an event, it has more reality value, if that makes sense. I think that might partly be why we gravitate towards ceremonies for important changes in life. It's like it makes it feel more real even though nothing actually has changed in many cases by doing the ceremony or the ritual or whatever. I actually feel that about YouTube. Like it's weird. I don't want to feel this way but I do. I am a full-time YouTuber and this is my career at this point right but it kind of bothers me that I don't have the the plaque. I don't have the 100,000 subscriber plaque. <laughs> even though the plaque itself can never mean as much to me as like the community I've developed and the highs I've experienced from watching these shows and talking about it with you guys. There's something to that that I think would feel great that would add some kind of gravity or closure to the whole experience. So I get why Deku would fix it on the card, even though he's accomplished so much more than this card in this exam when you think about it. Eraser, since we've reconnected, how about we get together for joint training sometime? I admire her determination. Be smart. Oh, she's getting in. See, sometimes persistence pays off. I still don't like you. Sorry. <laughs> That's all for now. No, but it feels different though. That was nice of him, I guess. It, it has a totally different tone. We'll it feels like competition. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. 
He is someone who is both bold and sensitive. I admire such joie de vivre. <laughs> oh, joie de vivre. Got it. <laughs> I want to know more about the training you do to erase your presence. Right, right. They have like a learned quirk thing, which is pretty amazing. Do you have any idea Her disappearing is so good, they don't Body even suit. know. Oh, you she mean Kami. Is. She said she wasn't Kami, was too well and took a cab to the station so she could go home. Oh, I see. Too bad I didn't get the chance to ask. Actually, she's You'll see been her acting again. kind of strangely for the past few days. Oh no, is she possessed? Where what the right hell? Toga? Oh, it's Wait, Toga. It was wonderful fun today. Was it Toga the whole time? That would explain the the interest. And my mission Long time to no see. Hands McGee. By ingesting someone's blood, she can transform into that person. Wait, is that what she is? Do did we see that before? Did I just forget? I think the first time we saw her, she was just after their blood and her quirk was like crushing on everyone. I assume that you would devote yourself to teaching now. And yet you've come to visit me. Got a little Hannibal Lecter situation going. I feel like they'd have some good talks. <laughs> Do you know how stifling this place is, All Might? What if do they I have to talk about? <laughs> to scratch an itch by rubbing my body against this chair. Then every gun muzzle in my box suddenly <laughs> I was like, how could this prison possibly neutralize all these quirks? And the answer, of course, is guns. The ultimate quirk. Bullets. Not even a bit of stimulation for my mind. But there must be some kind of quirk suppressant in this prison because his opera quirk isn't activating. You're trapped here. You'll never go free. <laughs> I'll let you, you need to watch more, more Batman. Don't tell me you're still trying to be a hero with that feeble body. Oh, you do not understand. Chatty. He will always be a hero. Till his dying breath. What were you trying to achieve? What are you hoping for now? You devote your time to exploiting and controlling people, toying with innocent lives for no reason. Maybe they could be friends. <laughs> I was talking about rivals earlier, right? Even if I told they you, they do the have truth, things in common. Be satisfied. There are some people who never understand each other. Interesting, though, that all for one seems like the more common of the two. That actually might suggest what he said has some truth to it. You know, that he may have considered All Might's side more than All Might has considered his side. Which doesn't make him right, but it might make him more prepared for the conversation. All Might, interestingly, seems fairly rattled and off his game with a villain he's defeated multiple times. But you know, it's one of those things. To go back to the, you know, my favorite thing ever, the Lion Turtle, the pure heart or whatever can never be corrupted by the poison that it touches. One of these days I'll get this quote right. But from my perspective, there really is nothing to lose by hearing exactly what All for One has to say and really trying to understand it. And I think if there's full understanding that, that happens, as counterintuitive as this might be, I feel like it's like a switch is flipped where now you've risen above it and it's no longer a threat. And as long as ideas are provoking these kinds of strong emotions, then I think it means there are still shadows to uncover in oneself. It means that there are still ways we have not mastered and fully understood and subverted those ideas. Which in many cases is perfectly understandable and valid because as has often come up in the show, good villains at least typically have some truth to what they're saying. You know, they have they have points. And it can be tough to separate that initially. It can be tough to stomach that someone like All for One or Stain or Shigaraki or whatever could actually have something of value to say, despite how terrible their actions are. And I could see how even if he's not aware of it, that would be an existential threat to All Might, who's built so much of of his everything on a handful of ideas that All for One has lived under for so long. And probably has interesting insights on we are the same though you'd never admit it just right 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 to they're the going to be similar in many ways since they're enemies an powerful devil it's that simple oh okay so much for <laughs> understanding complex ideas after you appeared my infinite potential suddenly became finite it's normal to pass your work on to that someone else that explains a lot of the hate here. think of it as inheritance all might made him mortal it seems for me, that just raises more questions because we still don't really know the the why of it. He said All Might wouldn't understand it, but he did say he had an ideal. So I'm curious what that ideal is. It would be sort of unsatisfying if it's like, I want to be a devil just because, you know, just because I can. I don't think that would be sufficient motivation for everything he's done. And all the blood, sweat, and tears and eyes he's put in. How are things actually looking on the outside? Not too bad, all things considered, I guess. But then I have an active imagination. Oh, there it is. They couldn't right suppress it now, the forever. The concern about your absence is mixing with their worry about Endeavor as the new de facto leader. It's yep. making them question the unity of hero society. Yep. <laughs> they sense uh, yeah. the growing instability caused Whoops. by the vacuum. Look at that camera tilt. Compelled to act. All Might's world right now. This is very Silence of the Lambs. If the scenario I composed plays out as I intended it to, 
Then I know everything that's going on outside these walls. Well, you may be smart, but you forgot one critical thing. Deku and friends had a, had a great day at school, and they all got special badges. Aoyama shot his tummy beam. Um, Invisible Girl was extra in invisible, I, I'm told. Things are moving for the heroes, too. Any rise in crime moving forward is due to you concealing your fading strength. He sort of nailed it there. And he, here's at least one part of the existential threat. But all for one is also wrong. He's not powerless. He just doesn't have physical strength anymore. You're finished. Bet you really want to punch me, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big big deal for All Might. He you can no longer you know everything. solve his problems through multiple punching punches. People. Yes, correct. Do you want Shigaraki, my master's blood relation, to kill me, or kill me and young Midoriya? Oh, that that does make it a lot more interesting and significant. You're not looking at him like the villain he is anymore. That's dangerous. Yeah, it can be both. As I said at that time as well. I will not be killed so easily. And I refuse to let the future you imagine come to pass. And when he says it, he means it. Power or not. A few things straight, but this is really what you wanted to say. He's a little bit shaken. Yeah. All Might is, is still reeling, which is totally understandable. This is a new world for him. I am relentless. <laughs> You're the one who will watch help us from a cell for the rest of your days. Well, All Might had the last word there. Rest of my days, huh? Or did he? Though, just thinking out loud, I'm not even sure Shigaraki killing All Might would really be the the symbolic thing that he would want it to be. Well, it would be. It would be. It just wouldn't be as significant as if it had happened when All Might was in full power. But yeah, there's more to this whole thing, right? I mean, there's there's an ideal he's going for, right? Excuse me. It feels like there is. <gasps> Young Midoriya. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That should cheer you up. You got your little shiny badge, shiny card. I will not forget this summer the rest of my life. It's been an it's eventful been a bit. I wonder if he got summer. a message. <laughs> you, to say the least. Meet me up front later. Oh. We need to have a talk about your quirk. Oh. Yeah, I think Bakugo's figured it out, largely. How far are we going? We shouldn't be walking around in the middle He's of the leading night. him out to battle. That is the only explanation Hello? for Bakugo. Whatever, Deku. No matter what power you end up with, you'll never be able to beat me. Whoops. This is the place where we had our first combat training. Right, and Deku broke the ceiling. I wasn't hiding my quirk from you. It was given to me by someone else, recently. Oh yeah, he like sort of directly told him at one point. I forgot about that, it feels like a lifetime ago. But after seeing what happened to All Might at Kamino Ward, I began to understand. And look, see like officially the first one to really get it? Power your own. Or is it a fake out? A lot of thought. You got your quirk from All Might, didn't you? Nope. He gave you his power. No fake outs here. Deku's not really a liar. And somehow it's all connected to what you said about getting your quirk from someone else. Yep. I mean, if there is any doubt that Bakugo was sharp. Then somehow a little nobody like you was singled out by the person I admired most. And I didn't even realize it. That's why we're here. You and I are settling this. Right here. Right now. Yeah, they're gonna fight. But that's not gonna really solve anything. <laughs> Although it should be really cool. I wonder if this isn't really Bakugo sort of struggling with the last remnants of, of a lesson he has to learn here, which is that the power is not really where it's at. That's probably how he thought about it for a long time, because he's always been praised for his power, praised for his ability, for his aptitude. And he really leaned on that all the way, right? Like, I'm Bakugo and I'm great, and therefore I'm in, in position to be All Might. But the more you watch, or the more I watch at the show, the more it occurs to me how little All Might's power has to do with him being who he is. I mean, that's a little bit of an overstatement. His power is really important. He has one for all, which is an enviable superpower in a world of superpowers. But if we're talking about ideals, if we're talking about hero not as the job, not as the myths, but as the things that are useful to us as people, right? The heroic qualities of All Might are his ideals and his spirit, and the fact that he will always be those things no matter what situation he's in, no matter what abilities he has. And that is also what Deku is and exactly why he was chosen, is because he was being All Might-like before he had any powers at all, at least that we know of. I'm still holding out for like a secret power. And Bakugo has All Might qualities for sure, but not the ones that I think are the most unique and distinct about All Might and Deku. Perhaps Bakugo is more Endeavor-like in his approach, you know? Although I feel like he's gonna be saved from being as bad as Endeavor by his experiences with these people. Not just All Might and his teachers, but his classmates as well. I mean, you could already see a massive transformation. But this might be the, you know, in some sense, the vestiges of that sort of belief. Like, no, no, this is right. I am right. It is power. Deku is a wimp. Although, 
that's just one idea and I'm sure there are a bunch of other things to it as well. Like jealousy is probably a factor. It must be a, you know, a pretty bitter pill to swallow to have your perspective flipped on its head like that, to see Deku, someone who you really didn't respect at all, suddenly have the greatest gift you could ever hope to have. And there might also even be, and this is just sort of me thinking out loud and just speculating, some sort of benevolent intent behind it as well. Like, let's see if you're worthy. I guess in some sense, speaking again of rivalry, Deku is in some sense now someone that Bakugo has to respect. He has no choice but to have Deku on his radar as like someone even to aspire to be, right? So maybe this is in some weird sense a way of just connecting, you know, that that in a way would be a very Bakugo way to approach things, right? Like Bakugo's not one who approaches relationships and connection and kindness through words. In fact, his words are the opposite of that. He's someone who approaches it through like action and obfuscated intent. You know, either way, no matter what it is, I feel like it's sort of cool that they're going to have it out. There are good things that can come out of it for both of them. They've been framed as a sort of dual hero path. They're both very different, but have things the other needs. And I feel like it's highly likely that the fight will bring some great stuff out because of that. So yeah, that is the end of this arc and the beginning of the final stretch in season three, which is really cool. Mm -hmm.